Hi everybody, I'm going to try reading uh, fan fiction I recently uh, finished. And I'm going to display the <clears throat> fan art that accompanies it, basically. Uh, you can see Dana's creator, Dana's at the bottom there. And her, her acronym stands for Data Analysis Android. And um, I just, I love her to death. Uh, she, is, she was created by Dr. Alonzo Ramirez. And the, um, the other character on the top right is uh, the female version of the fourth doctor. And I have to say this, just being slightly biased, I absolutely adore her scarf and I must find a scarf like that. It has every color known to man and I adore rainbows and I just must have it because it is the chicest scarf I've ever seen but <clears throat> my mind is uh, going in an opposite direction and I don't want to do that so without further ado potentiality to love. Rebooting. Dana Unit 1.0 Assessing Damage. Current Location. England. The only inquiry remains as to when I am. I know my moniker and what it stands for. The acronym means Data Analysis Android and I know who manufactured me. A man of intellect named Dr. Alonzo Ramirez. You could inquire as to the purpose for my manufacturing, but I could never respond properly. <clears throat> It seems my RAM has been damaged, but I know my ROM still maintains fragments of my true personality. It makes my processor hurt, and I really need to conserve whatever energy I have left. All I recall now is how I arrived in this place. There was a great blinding flash of light, and I sensed gravity departing all around my frame as I became weightless. Typically, I had the ability to defy this basic physical property all on my own, thanks to propulsion and plasma batteries, but this force was so much more powerful that I couldn't resist even with my jet propulsors. <clears throat> Recalibrating, defragging, rebooting. I have awakened only to find myself inside a vast and somewhat dilapidated mansion. Analyzing location. Still in England. But when am I? I can't assess the time at all. None of what I scan seems to make any logical sense, and my data sensors are running practically mad. I sense the presence of another unit like myself in the same vicinity. Sneakily, I creep behind him and see if I can get his attention. He is the same design as myself, but male and extremely symmetrical. I can already assess his intelligence levels, and since he is also a containment of quantum consciousness, just like me. I try not to become too excited, lest I wag my tail completely off my body, but my main processor is terraflopping at Google's ad infinitum. Quietly, I clear my throat, hoping my voice will be registered by him. <coughs> he doesn't seem to hear me. Apparently, he is still recharging. Quietly, I nudge him from the side and he powers up. Identify yourself, strange but familiar unit, he stated in a somewhat alarmed tone, but yet I could detect a certain amount of inquisitiveness as well as infatuation, which had almost undone my binary sequencing. I am Dana, and you are? I asked in response. K-9, the robot dog chirped merrily. His chipper attitude was contagious. I felt my inner processor speeding up a tad and becoming a little heated. My cheeks even fluoresced, and I lowered my head slightly, hoping he wouldn't notice. You're exactly as I am. Save your feminine air. I detect essence of time travel from you, K-9 surmised. I explained, that explains some of the reason why I found myself here, but not all of it. K-9 scanned me, which tickled me immensely. <laughs> I didn't mean to make you laugh, Dana, he stated matter-of-factly. I wanted to say I wasn't objecting to being tickled by such a clever and engaging cybernetic unit, but I didn't wish to sound forward. Don't overload your data drives about that. I'm just relieved that there is a being here that can understand and relate to me, I responded honestly. It was then that we heard scuffling, and an intelligent, scrounging-haired man scuttled about the area I soon learned was called the laboratory. Immediately, I recognized him as my own creator. Alonzo? 
I asked inquisitively. The man who I soon learned was called Professor Alistair Griffin was not was certainly not my maker, but the semblance was quite unbelievable, in fact, remarkable. He was astonished to see me again and and I had to make my introduction, but I didn't mind. Fairly soon I came to know Starkey, who had quite an intriguing history behind him. K-9 filled me in on all that. I met Darius and Georgie, and then I had a jolt of memory. I had belonged to someone once, someone other than the man who created me. She had an air about her that was otherworldly, and stardust twinkled in her eyes. I felt the need to protect her, but now I was back in the past and had no feasible means of returning on my own, returning to my own dimension. It was maddening, but then again, K-9's company somehow made this longing I had for my own mistress to fade away into the background. Even if I never returned home, I would be with a family that loved me, and I knew I had humans to defend. I was ultimately torn between my new robotic, robotic companion and returning to the side of the woman I re remembered now, I, rem I now remembered uh, was my mistress. She went by another name as well. Ah, yes, the doctor, I believe it was. She had to settle, I, I had to settle myself and keep repeating that she was safe and she could handle herself perfectly. She had done so gazillions of times before without my assistance. However, I missed her desperately, yet that piercing, admiring gaze from K-9 was enough to make me feel as though I was melting. Not the melting you would think of as turning metal into wi liquid, but the feeling was beyond my comprehension or identification. We had been doing all we could to keep Dr. Griffin and the other safe from whatever came out of the time space time manipulator that the professor had built, and for now we were exhilarated simply being in the general same general vicinity of each other. I had no idea just how incredible the emotion known as joy or what sublimity meant, but the first time I experienced what I what is known as a kiss, I swear, I heard music that spanned thousands of years. None of it was cacophony, but each piece was a recollection of who I was. Slowly the memories returned, and even though I had the potentiality to love canine, and I did with every last spark and circuit, I knew the STM had to be repaired. I was more useful in that time than I was here, though it, I did keep the alien presence at bay. I admitted the people here were very kind to me and made me feel a part of their family. I had become an assistant to Alistair in days past, and we were closer to repairing the STM to the point where a portal between space and time was sending me back to my own time frame. K-9 had made a point earlier he did not wish for me to depart, but I said rather tactfully, I think we are, I think there are one too many quantum consciousnesses here, and I am one too many cook in the cosmic ki kitchen. It was then that K-9 caught me off guard, and of course no one else was watching. It was just he and I under the vast blanket of stars that he and I remembered so intently and kissed me. Electricity buzzed and hummed throughout me. I didn't want this moment to end. I had never been so delighted and joyous, but I knew I couldn't stay. K-9, I can't stay, I can't stay here any longer. I may be causing a temporal paradox and not realizing it. You must understand, I replied. K-9 huffed slightly, acting a bit childish. I don't want you to leave, he said purely. I couldn't help but chortle. <laughs> the plan is set, my dear. Tomorrow I will be living. leaving. I know who I am and to whom I belong. I am returning to her. You do what you must, my friend. I know I will never forget your, you or your kindness that you have shown me. I felt some wetness from, on my metal frame and wondered if K-9 was leaking somehow. I quizzically raised my eyebrow and came puzzled. Are you all right? You seem to be excreting some sort of liquid from your lacrimal glands, I pointed out. K-9 shuffled his head down and to the side, indicating bashfulness. <clears throat> I know I must have gotten something in my visor and disturbed my visual output somehow. I will miss you, though, Dana, he said. It was my turn to kiss him now. I softly touched my muscle to his and nuzzled it affectionately. I probably wouldn't know this sort of euphoria for eons to come, but it didn't matter. Somehow I could sense the cry of my mistress across the, the depths of the fourth dimension itself. Tomorrow I would be seeing her again and saying my final farewells to my only equal. The next day, Alistair had powered up the STM and gathered family around to say their farewells to me. We had experienced some rollicking adventures and I had fought alongside my companion, K-9. 
I would never regret anything I had done with him by my side, and I knew that somehow, some way, I would fight with him again. But for now, I was jolted back to my own place, my true home. Dana, my brilliant girl! Where are should i say when have you been the doctor inquired as she hugged me close to her frame i could feel wetness from her face as well don't tell me you're leaking too doctor i said jokingly just elated that you are back in one piece good that you are finally home so far i have avoided being exterminated or deleted and for the time we're safe in the tardis so when or where do you wish to travel dana i myself have a partic peculiar jones for something sweet maybe there's a planet full of edible items and jelly babies that grow on trees the doctor said with a massive mischief, mischievous grin, grin on her face her blue eyes sparkled mer merrily as she switched on the flux capacitor and entered a random co coordinates with that i felt the tardis wobble and hurtle forward wherever or whenever we were going didn't matter i was back home I was blah, blah, blah. I was back with my beloved doctor and my happiness had returned again never to disappear